How's that again? Presence. The truth about Africanized bees. The Africanized bee, also known as the Africanized honeybee and known colloquially as the killer bee, is a hybrid of the western honeybee, Apis mellifera, produced originally by cross-breeding of the East African lowland honeybee A.M. scutellata, with various European honeybee subspecies such as the Italian honeybee, A.M. lagostica, and the Iberian honeybee, A.M. iberiensis. The East African lowland honeybee was first introduced to Brazil in 1956 in an effort to increase honey production, but 26 swarms escaped quarantine in 1957. Since then, the hybrid has spread throughout South America and arrived in North America in 1985. Hives were found in South Texas in the United States in 1990. Africanized honeybees are typically much more defensive than other varieties of honeybees, and react to disturbances faster than European honeybees. They can chase a person a quarter of a mile, 400 meters. They have killed some 1,000 humans, with victims receiving 10 times more stings than from European honeybees. They have also killed horses and other animals. There are 29 recognized subspecies of Apis mellifera based largely on geographic variations. All subspecies are cross-fertile. Geographic isolation led to numerous local adaptations. These adaptations include brood cycles synchronized with the bloom period of local flora, forming a winter cluster in colder climates, migratory swarming in Africa, enhanced, long-distance, foraging behavior in desert areas, and numerous other inherited traits. The Africanized honeybees in the Western Hemisphere are descended from hives operated by biologist Warwick Eker, who had interbred honeybees from Europe and Southern Africa. Eker was attempting to breed a strain of bees that would produce more honey in tropical conditions than the European strain of honeybee then in use throughout North, Central and South America. The hives containing this particular African subspecies were housed at an apiary near Rio Claro, Sao Paulo, in the southeast of Brazil, and were noted to be especially defensive. These hives had been fitted with special excluder screens, called queen excluders, to prevent the larger queen bees and drones from getting out and mating with the local population of European bees. According to Kerr, in October 1957 a visiting beekeeper, noticing that the queen excluders were interfering with the worker bees' movement, removed them, resulting in the accidental release of 26 Tanganyika and swarms of A.M. Scutellata. Following this accidental release, the Africanized honeybee swarms spread out and crossbred with local European honeybee colonies. The descendants of these colonies have since spread throughout the Americas, moving through the Amazon basin in the 1970s, crossing into Central America in 1982, and reaching Mexico in 1985, because their movement through these regions was rapid and largely unassisted by humans. Africanized honeybees have earned the reputation of being a notorious invasive species. The prospect of killer bees arriving in the United States caused a media sensation in the late 1970s, inspired several horror movies, and sparked a bit about the wisdom of humans altering entire ecosystems. The first Africanized honeybees in the U.S. were discovered in 1985 at an oil field in the San Joaquin Valley of California. The experts theorized the colony had not traveled over land but instead arrived hidden in a load of oil drilling pipe chip from South America. The first permanent colonies arrived in Texas from Mexico in 1990. In the Tucson region of Arizona, a study of draft swarms in 1994 found that only 15% had been Africanized. This number had grown to 90% by 1997. Africanized honeybees are considered an invasive species in the Americas. As of 2002, the Africanized honeybees had spread from Brazil south to northern Argentina and north to Central America, Trinidad, the West Indies, Mexico, Texas, Arizona, Nevada, New Mexico, Florida, and Southern California. In June 2005, it was discovered that the bees had spread into southwest Arkansas. Their expansion stopped for a time at eastern Texas, possibly due to the large population of European honeybee hives in the area. However, discoveries of the Africanized honeybees in southern Louisiana show that they have gotten past this barrier, or have come as a swarm aboard a ship. On 11 September 2007, Commissioner Bob Odom of the Louisiana Department of Agriculture and Forestry said that Africanized honeybees had established themselves in the New Orleans area in February 2009. Africanized honeybees were found in southern Utah. The bees had spread into eight counties in Utah, as far north as Grand and Emory counties by May 2017. 
In October 2010, a 73-year-old man was killed by a swarm of Africanized honeybees while clearing brush on his South Georgia property, as determined by Georgia's Department of Agriculture. In 2012, Tennessee state officials reported that a colony was found for the first time in a beekeeper's colony in Monroe County in the eastern part of the state in June 2013. 62-year-old Larry Goodwin of Moody, Texas, was killed by a swarm of Africanized honeybees. In May 2014, Colorado State University confirmed that bees from a swarm which had aggressively attacked an orchardist near Palisade, in west-central Colorado, were from an Africanized honeybee hive. The hive was subsequently destroyed. In tropical climates, they effectively outcompete European honeybees and, at their peak rate of expansion, they spread north at almost 2 kilometers, about 1 mile a day. There were discussions about slowing the spread by placing large numbers of docile European strain hives in strategic locations, particularly at the Isthmus of Panama, but various national and international agricultural departments could not prevent the bees' expansion. Current knowledge of the genetics of these bees suggests that such a strategy, had it been tried, would not have been successful. As the Africanized honeybee migrates further north, colonies continue to interbreed with European honeybees. In a study conducted in Arizona in 2004 it was observed that swarms of Africanized honeybees could take over weakened European honeybee hives by invading the hive, then killing the European queen and establishing their own queen. There are now relatively stable geographic zones in which either Africanized honeybees dominate, a mix of Africanized and European honeybees is present, or only non-Africanized honeybees are found, as in the southern portions of South America or northern North America. African honeybees ads can't abandon the hive and any food store to start over in the new location, more readily than European honeybees. This is not necessarily a severe loss in tropical climates where plants bloom all year, but in more temperate climates it can leave the colony with not enough stores to survive the winter. Thus Africanized honeybees are expected to be a hazard mostly in the southern states of the United States, reaching as far north as the Chesapeake Bay in the east. The cold weather limits of the Africanized honeybee have driven some professional bee breeders from Southern California into the harsher wintering locales of the northern Sierra Nevada and southern Cascade Range. This is a more difficult area to prepare bees for early pollination placement in, such as is required for the production of almonds. The reduced available winter forage in Northern California means that bees must be fed for early spring buildup. The arrival of the Africanized honeybee in Central America is threatening the ancient art of keeping melipona stingless bees in log gums, although they do not interbreed or directly compete with each other. The honey production from an individual hive of Africanized honeybees can be as high as 100 kilograms, 220 pounds. This value exceeds the much smaller 3 to 5 kilograms, 7 to 11 pounds, of the various melipona stingless bee species. Thus economic pressures are forcing beekeepers to switch from the traditional stingless bees of their ancestors to the new reality of the Africanized honeybee. Whether this will lead to their extinction is unknown, but they are well adapted to exist in the wild, and there are a number of indigenous plants that the Africanized honeybees do not visit, so their fate remains to be seen. The Africanized honeybee is widely feared by the public, a reaction that has been amplified by sensationalist movies, such as Killer Bees, and The Swarm, and some of the media reports. Stings from Africanized honeybees kill on average one or two people per year, as the Africanized honeybee spreads through Florida, a densely populated state, officials worry that public fear may force misguided efforts to combat them. News reports of mass stinging attacks will promote concern and in some cases panic and anxiety, and cause citizens to demand responsible agencies and organizations to take action to help ensure their safety. We anticipate increased pressure from the public to ban beekeeping in urban and suburban areas. This action would be counterproductive. Beekeepers maintaining managed colonies of domestic European bees are our best defense against an area becoming saturated with AHB. These managed bees are filling an ecological niche that would soon be occupied by less desirable colonies if it were vacant. Florida African Bee Action Plan Killer bee is a term frequently used in media such as movies that portray aggressive behavior or actively seeking to attack humans. Africanized honeybee is considered a more descriptive term in part because their behavior is increased defensiveness compared to European honeybees that can exhibit similar defensive behaviors when disturbed. 
the sting of the Africanized honeybee is no more potent than any other variety of honeybee, and although they are similar in appearance to European honeybees, they tend to be slightly smaller and darker in color. Although Africanized honeybees do not actively search for humans to attack, they are more dangerous because they are more easily provoked, quicker to attack in greater numbers, and then pursue the perceived threat farther, for as much as a quarter of a mile, 400 meters. While studies have shown that Africanized honeybees can infiltrate European honeybee colonies and then kill and replace their queen, thus usurping the hive, this is less common than other methods. Wild and managed colonies will sometimes be seen to fight over honey stores during the dearth, periods when plants are not flowering, but this behavior should not be confused with the aforementioned activity. The most common way that a European honeybee hive will become Africanized is through crossbreeding during a new queen's mating flight. Studies have consistently shown that Africanized drones are more numerous, stronger and faster than their European cousins and are therefore able to outcompete them during these mating flights. The result of mating between Africanized drones and European queens is almost always Africanized offspring. AHEs are a threat to outdoor pets, especially mammals. The most detailed information available pertains to dogs. Less is known about livestock as victims there is a widespread consensus that cattle suffer occasional AHP attacks in Brazil, but there is little documentation about this it appears that cows sustain hundreds of stings if they are attacked, but can survive with injury.